you don't have it. Very few of us actually possess the things that we own. And that's a huge problem. There's a big difference between custodial ownership and non-custodial. And we are just seeing the ramifications of this again in the crypto space with FTX and the debacle of centralized exchanges as people realize that what they thought they owned, they actually didn't. Putting what you own into the hands of someone else is a horrible idea. Um, I've decided that <clears throat> the vast majority of what I hold, um, what I own, needs to be non-custodial. Uh, there are certain leverage opportunities that present themselves in custodial exchanges and platforms, but the risks are so high. When I trade options, those are always traded through an exchange. Um, there may be some way in Wall Street where you can, you know, in person, you can, you know, broker your own assets. I'm not sure exactly, you know, what the possibilities are there. But the reality is that people don't trade stocks and options and anything like that by creating their own contracts and holding those contracts. And, and the reality is it's all done through these exchanges. That's all custodial. The money that we put into those exchanges is custodial. The money that we take, uh, the, you know, the, the money that we, uh, that we make from selling those assets is held by an institution. So we only get to cash out if they say so. And much along the same vein, your bank account, your bank account is custodial. A lot of people have been running into problems where legally you're allowed to pull certain amounts out of your bank account. But in reality, if you go to, if you walk into a bank and this is true of most banks, um, and most people never try this. Um, you know, I certainly haven't, um, you know, and, and, you know, fair enough. I'm operating off of, off of, um, what I've read and, and, you know, what I've heard, but most people don't walk into a bank and say, I'd like to withdraw $20,000. And so we all think that if an emergency happened, we could walk into a bank and withdraw our full account you know, or whatever we, whatever we have in there. Um, but the reality is that's not a thing right now. Um, the people who can, who have tried that, most of the time they're not able to. The bank won't let them withdraw amounts that large because the banks aren't keeping cash on hand. Um, they are running on <laughs> the whole concept of reserves. You know, there are no actual reserves. Um, it's all just debt. And so the amounts of money that, that can actually be withdrawn at these banks are so infinitesimally small that it wouldn't even equate to a percentage, you know, a single percent of the money that people have deposited there. And that's, that's just one custodial asset. You know, the cash that you have in the bank on our apps, we see the amounts there and we think we have access to that amount. <coughs> but the reality is that we only have access to that amount when the bank agrees that we can access that amount. If the bank starts struggling and they lock down withdrawals, we can't really do anything. There's no recourse. We, we agreed to those terms. 
And much like that, when crypto exchanges, FTX and crypto.com and all these, you know, all these others, um, when they, when you deposit your money there, your Ethereum, your Bitcoin, whatever the case might be, um, they're doing the same things that the banks are. They don't have it on hand. Why? Because the reality is they're loaning it out. They're leveraging themselves on those assets. And, you know, everybody, you know, flipped out over, over FTX. And rightfully so. There were so many laws broken. Um, and now Congress is determined to pass new laws to address the problem that FTX caused, but the problem was that they broke laws. Those things were already illegal. They'll continue to be illegal. New legislation doesn't make them illegal. They were already illegal. The reality is the new legislation will give them more control over the decentralized areas of the blockchain. But that's that's a whole other discussion. The, the big thing with FTX and the others is the this mindset of modern finance where they take your money and they take risks with it. But they're taking risks with so many people's money that the small percentage of people that want to withdraw at any given point in time, um, they have enough to cover that from day to day. And so they can lose large swaths of money um, and people will never know for for years because more money keeps pouring into their in, into their wallets and so they can just keep losing so long as they bring in enough new people it's a it's a big ponzi scheme and the reality is it's not very different from how banks operate um, and from how financial institutions operate in the you know in the real economy But it's a symptom of what's going, what's happening right now. It's, it's just on a, it's in an industry that, that's more vulnerable. But we're going to see this collapse. I believe that one of the biggest trends of the next 10 years will be collap the collapse of custodians. And I think we're going to see the bulk of that in the next two to three years. Where... Everything that people have trusted, the bond markets, the stock markets, the, um, the banks, the lenders, you know, all the financial institutions that have such amazing reputations and they deal with so much money and they've had a, such a glowing history, um, that's all going to come apart because for the first time in maybe a hundred years, the central banks themselves are collapsing under their own weight. And they don't have anyone to bail them out. When governments made horrible decisions, um, or, or when large corporations made hor horrible decisions, governments would bail them out. Um, central banks would, um, would bail out those governments, and it was just a big chain. And more and more central banks popped up around the globe and they could continue to do this more and more to a larger extent. And now there's a central bank in every country in the world. But this process, this uh, ridiculous behavior, it's coming to an end. They've leveraged themselves far too much and we're seeing a global economic collapse food crises, energy crises, distribution crises, population collapse. Uh, there is so much happening that is a negative force for economies that they can't simply uh, inflate their way out of this problem because eventually inflation catches up. 
you can mask it for a long time by daisy chaining it along and you can steal money from growing economies in order to do that um but it catches up with you eventually and uh and all they've managed to do is create a larger and larger boulder to fall on top of us the most important thing right now is that we do not expose ourselves, expose our assets to someone else's risk. Don't put your money in the hands of other people. Don't put your valuables in the hands of other people. Hold assets that you can access in an emergency. Um, a lot, a lot of the assets that I, I love to mess around with, like options, I do, not, I do not hold those assets. I cannot hold those assets. Those are held by custodians. And they provide me amazing opportunities. But overnight, I could lose access to all of them. All at once. And we've seen this happen with specific assets on, say, Robin Hood, um, with the GME uh, shorting activity and all that. Um, and we've seen other stuff. Um, I think that's going to happen in a mu on a much larger scale as we see these, these banks like Deloitte uh, collapsing and these large financial institutions. And FTX was deeply tied into the political sphere and... Um, the wealthy elite and it's it's just the first in a long line so be prepared be ready to recover when things crash if you hold real assets that hold real value inherent value and you possess them possess them so that if everything shuts down overnight you still have access to those. Um, no one can take those from you. That's what's important. Because there's a very real possibility that we, that we see the largest economic collapse in human history over the next few years. And Ray Dalio talks about this concept of Economists and risk analysts, they, um, they encourage people to prepare for the worst thing that's ever happened. Uh, or, or the, yeah, the, actually, I believe this is, <laughs> maybe I'm mixing this up. I think this is Nassim Taleb with Anti-Fragile, who's talking about the uh, people try to prepare for the worst thing that ever happened uh, in this sphere. But the thing is that, before that worst thing that ever happened, there was a, a much less impactful event, and that was the worst thing that ever happened. And so, if people prepare for the last collapse, they will be underprepared for the next greatest collapse. And that's the big problem. Um, you know, Ray Dalio, what he said in Principles, I believe, was that most of the big turning points in his life um, were in relation to things that he didn't see coming, um, not because he wasn't, you know, prepared necessarily, that he didn't learn from his past, but that in his past, he had never experienced those events because in his lifetime, they were new events. And that is likely going to happen again, where in our lifetimes, we have never seen events like what's about to occur, maybe in the past couple lifetimes. And those are the trends that hit the hardest, the ones that nobody is prepared for, because they don't exist in our timeline. But they have happened, and they will happen again, and they're caused by the same things that they're always caused by. And the reality is that if we can protect ourselves 
from that damage, if we can have a majority of our assets in things that we hold, that we control, then when that comes, the damage to us is going to be far lower. And the reality is that um, if we can be hurt less by the crash, by the damage that's coming, then we will recover faster than anyone else. And that, uh, that's what we should be shooting for. Maybe we don't have enough time to prepare ourselves completely for what's to come. Maybe we've started preparing a little bit too late. Fair enough. But what we can do is make sure that when it hits, if we're better off than the average person, we can take risks after that crash that nobody else can afford to take. And we can make gains that nobody else can afford to make because of those risks. So be prepared for, be prepared for what's coming and don't get stuck on this concept of one thing. I'm hugely obsessed with silver. It's my, my big, uh, I mean, it's, it's just truly an obsession. But the reality is that my obsession with silver is risky in the sense that if I am wrong about that one thing and that is too large a percentage of my plan for survival, then if something happens that I could never have predicted because it, it isn't in my frame, then that wrecks me. That obliterates me. So I need, I need to hold things that are uncorrelated with that. Because, sure, I could be like, oh, well, instead of holding silver, I'll hold silver and gold and palladium and other precious metals. But the reality there is, okay, that's great, but what if something happens that, that trashes all the precious metals? You know, what if we learn how to m mine space asteroids and suddenly gold and silver are like super common? Um, you know, <laughs> at this rate, you know, Elon Musk might just do it. Um, you know, there's so many things that could happen and we can't predict all of them. So make sure that your preparations are diversified and diversified in category, in, in correlated category not just in asset. You know, it's not, it's not enough to have 10 or 20 assets if they're correlated with each other. You, they, they need to be different. You need to protect yourself in many different ways along many different trend sets. Sometimes even bet against a trend that you believe in. You know, sometimes that's worth doing if the reward is great enough. So... It, you know, it can't hurt to put a very small percentage of what you have as a bet against yourself. But keep stacking assets that you control, that you possess. And, you know, this is one of the, the hugely valuable elements of the blockchain. Um, in a non-custodial wallet, there is no force of nature. There is no army on this earth. Uh, there is no judge, no police officer, no person that can access those funds unless you give them access in some way, shape, or form. It's written into the blockchain. It is a truth, a, a digitally verifiable truth. And the only... You know, the, the, never before have we had assets like that. Um, and that's not to say that there, there aren't certain risks surrounding that. Like, just because they can't take it from me doesn't mean that I can act any way I want knowing that. If I break a bunch of laws, well, they might not be able to take that from me, but they could take my freedom from me. And then what good is holding those assets 
if I'm sitting in jail. Um, so we need to we need to act in a way that takes reality into account, but hold assets that you control, non-custodial. Make sure they're a large enough percentage of your portfolio so that when things come, you're ready. And get prepared quick, because it's here. What happened with FTX? Um, that was arguably larger than what happened with Enron. And it's just a blip on the radar compared to what's about to happen. There are so many different crises, so many different crashes incoming, so many organizations, institutions, governments that have leveraged themselves. And then there are people who have leveraged themselves on the trust of those organizations. It's all going to come crashing down. And it might happen in pieces. But when it hits, it's going to be brutal. And this crash we've seen in crypto is just the start. I think I, I have no clue how low Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the others will go. Um, but I think once we start nearing, once the crises become obvious in society, Having dry powder is going to be extremely valuable. Being prepared to snag some of that Bitcoin, snag some of that, you know, um, Ethereum and, and, and the others. I think there's real utility there. Um, certain currencies are, are more valuable than others for certain things. Bitcoin, I think, holds the greatest potential um, financial freedom wise. But there's valuable utilities for some of these others. Just be sure that you hold what you hold. And no one else controls it. No one else can say no. I'm not going to give that to you. If there's someone between you and the asset that you hold, there's a problem. So be prepared. Get ready. And... I'll see you next time, guys. Stay safe. If you've taken damage, take a minute. Recover. Take a deep breath. And then reflect. And learn from what happened. Was it a mistake you made? Was it a failure on your part? Did you break a rule? Was it ignorance? of something that caused the mistake. Find out what, what caused the damage and then create rules that protect you from that damage in future. Because what we have done once, we are likely to do again. That is a rule of nature. It's a rule of biology. It's how the myelin sheaths work in our brain, wrapping around our neurons. The more we do something, the more likely we are to do something again. It reinforces itself. So create rules that protect you from the mistakes you've made in the past. I'll see you guys next week. Hope you have a great one.